gentlemen and the odd lassie welcome to the shop today I'm gonna go over where I think you need to spend money on quality tools and where I think the more generic brands uh, make sense okay so this is for people who want to spend their money wisely okay you can buy name brand everything and be no better off and I'm gonna try to use science here. I'm gonna try to use facts. You can spend countless hours watching people's videos and opinions, and, and, it, and there's nothing really substantial in these videos. It's I like this brand or I like that brand, or you know this tool truck comes along, or I've I've had good experiences here. I get wrapped up watching them, and after it's like, all right, what did I learn? Absolutely nothing. Okay, there's millions of opinions. And there doesn't even seem to be consensus, but I'm going to try to use logic and tell you where to spend the money and where you can save. Okay, but first we need to go over a bit of engineering and a little science here to show you uh, and give you some background of what logic I'm using. Okay, so there's pr three parameters I think that are important for tools that you need to understand. The first, if you watched my video, and I'll link in the description below modulus of elasticity all right that is the stiffness of a steel and as you can see here where I got that blue pen okay um, modulus is a measure of the stiffness of the material in the elastic range okay most metals exhibit exhibit this linear stiffness behavior and have a module that vary very little with heat treatment or additional alloying elements. For example, high strength steel has the same E as the low strength steel. That's very important. I explained further in my previous video, but what does that mean in layman terms? So we just went over, that's the stiffness. That means a cheap quality steel will deflect and bend the same amount as a good quality steel. I'm gonna get why that's important. So just remember, modulus, stiffness. Number two, we're going to go over what hardness is, okay? Hardness is, as the name implies, the hardness of the material. How likely it will um, uh, suffer an impact, okay, to a permanent, um, you can say, a permanent bump in the steel or a permanent deflection that you cannot recover, okay? And that's actually related by a formula uh, that it relates to the ultimate tensile strength. So the stronger the material, the harder it is. Okay, you got to be careful though, and it becomes brittle. And the last thing is we're going to go over is ultimate tensile strength. So that's basically at the end of the stress strain curve, which I went about in my previous video, that is your ultimate tensile strength. That's where it breaks. This is where it starts bending after it becomes linear. So it bends, it bends, then it breaks here, okay? So that value affects your hardness and I'm gonna explain a little more in the video and why that's important okay so modulus hardness and uh, ultimate tensile strength and these are all values that are well known for materials okay for example you get a textbook like this and you can look up various um, steels right your 1010 there that's your typical uh, cold roll steel 44,000 psi Okay, and then you have your 4140. That's your tool steels. You see Q and T that's quench and tempered um, So your heat treating does a lot. You see the difference in the strength Okay, it's quite it's tripling the strength That's the yield strength then that's when it starts to um, Go from elastic to plastic and this is when it out actually breaks ultimate tensile in two different um, measurements here one is imperial one's metric so these are important right you need to know how strong a, a tool is and that depends on the quality of the steel but it doesn't depend on how the steel performs in the plast in the e sorry elastic range before it starts bending it performs the same okay so let me get right into this guys so the first tool I think you have to spend your money wisely on is screwdrivers and I'm gonna go back to the the engineering parameter I told you it was important that is hardness 
Why? These tips, okay, need to be strong. They need to be hard, okay? You don't have to buy Snap-on. This is Snap-on. Great tool. Love it. Um, you know, it's performed perfectly. You can see the tip here is in really good shape. There's other brands. Philo. Great insulated screwdriver. Klein. Has great grip. This is a Robertson. It's got a really nice tapered grip in the nut here. Tips holding up well. Cobalt. These are actually made in USA. Great screwdriver too. Fuller used to be Canadian made. Now I notice they're not putting Canada on them, so I'm not sure where they're made. Great tip as well. Okay. You can't make this any bigger. So this material has to be strong and it has to hold up to repeated use. And I'm going to get why you can make other things bigger, but that comes later. See, this has to fit precisely. So you want a precision ground and you want it to be a hard tip. So spend your money on the screwdrivers. I love these acetate handles. Easy clean up. They can take impact. They're impact resistant. Okay, so spend your money on these guys. You know, it depends what you like. If you like working with electrical or you do work with electrical clients, great with the rubber or this Philo insulated. Um, otherwise, I prefer the old style snap-on handle before they went to the soft handle. And these are easy to clean up. Fullers are great. I got this from Ace Value. It's also Canadian made. Really good tip on this. Really well ground. Um, so, you know what? There's tons of stuff out there, guys. Spend your money on screwdrivers, whatever you like. There's a bunch of good ones. SK is too good too. Sockets. Okay? Sockets are where you do not need to spend your money on. And let me explain. You can make the socket thicker to compensate for, let's say, a lack of quality in steel, okay? But I've had this Mastercraft and it's performed perfectly. It's got the flank drive radius here, okay? It's performed perfectly, no issues. Curiously, this gray doesn't have the rounded edges. I'm really curious why they don't do that, um, but nonetheless, this is also a good quality tool, but the Mastercraft was a bargain and it's performed perfectly for 15 years, okay? And it's just as thin. This is a comparable uh, snap-on here. You can see how thin it is with the flank drive. This is the Mastercraft, same size. It's also just as thin. You see there is no cracks. It's performed perfectly over the years. I don't think you need to spend the extra money. And what some companies do is they make this thicker to compensate. So what? If you have the room, save your money, okay? If you need to get in a tight place, well, you know what? These Mastercrafts are just as thin as the Snap-on. And I've never had a problem. It's not going to deflect any less. It's not going to round a bolt any less. Remember, why? Because of the modulus, the stiffness of the material. It might break earlier, but hey, I don't know that this Snap-on has better quality steel. That's what people say, but nobody's proven that. Okay, so it will not open up anymore because of the modulus. The strength, that, that's, that's open to debate. Um, next, hammers. Spend your money on hammers. Why? They're cheap. A good quality one's cheap anyways. This was 25 bucks and you get a proper proper hardened steel, okay? You don't know what the cheap ones do, how they harden it. You want a nice proper hardened steel. This is a Vaughn, that was a Vaughn. This is a Nupla Dead Blow. Both were great, both off Amazon. Love them to death. Um, moving along, wrenches. And I've gone over this in my other video. Back to the modulus. How much they open up these open end wrenches? The same amount because of the modulus, as long as the design is the same. And the design is the same. As a matter of fact, I've seen cheaper quality ones have these huge heads on them. This gear wrench is the same design as this. In that case, the cheaper quality one would open up less. The closed ends, okay. This is obviously a gear wrench. They're virtually identical. 
all of them. So I don't think it's wise to spend more money on a wrench if you don't have it. All right. Um, next. Pry bars. Pry bars, spend your money on. Why? Not that they'll bend anymore. It's all steel, right? This is a proto loved acetate handle, impact resistant. Because if these break, you go flying. And these might have a higher ultimate tensile strength. Love the old snap on hard handle. Love this proto. Uh, I just bought this 17 inch. This is a 12. I've had this forever. Nowhere on the tip, nicely hardened tip. I've looked at the cheap ones. These are much thinner in cross section, and the steel looks cheap. Okay, this is beautiful, cold, cold rolled here. Uh, not as nice finish on the proto, but the handle's beautiful. Um, moving along, ratchets. I've seen the Harbor Freight ones, and I'm impressed. Really nice imitation of the snap on. For ratchets, personally though, I like spending a little more money. I don't have to worry about the mechanism gumming up. But there's nothing engineering or design-wise to say that you need an Armstrong like this, a snap-on like this. I've had a Mastercraft for many years. It's been performing perfectly. Okay. But, you know, hey, it's eye candy. The mechanism is smooth. They come in a lot of different varieties, good quality ones, okay? So, you know, this is my treat to myself, but it's not needed. Um, next, breaker bars. Come on, guys, how often do you use a breaker bar? This was 15 bucks. Tool truck ones are 150. The previous one broke because I think they'd used a cast steel for this. Because when it was broken, you see a lot of, like, Swiss cheese... Uh, in the in the grain structure, but I've they've since changed this to chromality. Got this from Princess Auto. It's a Canadian version of Harbor Freight. It's even got the half inch drive in the end for 15 bucks. For the odd time I use it was, which is really on an axle bolt, because most of the time you don't have room to get in a a breaker bar like this in the engine compartment. Don't waste your money on them if you don't have to. Lastly, pliers. Spend your money wisely. Let me show you how, why. Okay, these Huskies, you see the teeth? Okay, they haven't been used much and the teeth are already flattening. These Mastercraft, same. Teeth are not really well defined. That comes down to the hardness and the hardening process they use at the steel plant. You want a good quality hardened teeth. To really grip in there okay these mousecraft are decent but there's better ones out there okay nitpicks and gray and snap-on whichever one you like they're all they're all pretty good out there um, okay uh, did I miss anything no I think I got everything oh yes files 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 cutters this this is the same as uh, I would say as a plier you want a proper hardened tip to cut through stuff. Channel lock, great value for the money. Forgot to mention them for pliers. Go and have a look at them. And lastly, files. You want a good quality file for the hardness again to cut through steel and grind it down. Okay guys, please like, share, subscribe. Any engineering questions, feel free to ask me. More than happy to help. Um, you let me know, I'll go over it. And uh, thanks and subscribe. Take care, bye-bye.